So I went into the West Wing, and when I was hired and I agreed to do the show, uh, I was only going to be a part of the first season, they said. I would appear in the um, pilot, mm -hmm. but then I'd only be required for maybe three or four more episodes throughout that first year. And in those days, we would do 22 episodes. Mm -hmm. So that meant maybe I'd do five or six episodes at best. But I had a sneaky suspicion that uh, once they saw the Oval Office, uh, they were going to be a little more mm -hmm. interested in who occupies that chair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was right. Yes. Once they showed the pilot, and there's that magnificent scene of John uh, Spencer coming into the Oval Office uh, to uh, play something on the desk. Uh, there's an empty room, and they show it. it I mean, it looks like the inner the inner sanctum. I mean, mm -hmm. it looks like a chapel. Mm -hmm. you know? It's very impressive because the shot was high and wide and Mrs. Landingham came in from here and John came in from here and they met in the middle and John said something derogatory about the president, mm. called him a klutz and she said, uh, be careful of that language in here, sir. Mm. And I, whoa, <laughs> this is a different White House, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, that this was sacred ground. Mm. There was that sense and it was never, ever any different. This was sacred ground. Mm that with the confines of that place was something that you not just respected, but and, and people are awed by it, and they should be, mm. but that you were safe there as long as you told the truth. Yes. You know, and you were there for service. Yes. You know, if you were there for selfishness, not gonna work, mm. you know. So we, we, we had that sense of ourselves. We knew, we really knew, all of us knew we had something special. Mm. John and Brad and, and uh, all of us mm. knew. We knew. We had, and our only concern was, is this going to work commercially? Are we going to be able to sell cars and perfumes and <laughs> pharmaceuticals and you know, insurance with this? Uh, are people going to be interested uh, mm -hmm. you know, in this? Uh, and Clinton was president then. We started in 99. Mm -hmm. But he, he, he had only a year left in office. He loved the show, incidentally. Mm. Uh, he even visited us once and started giving uh, advice about the furniture. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I loved him. He was wonderful. That was the most satisfying uh, thing, was that it did work commercially. People were interested. It grew and grew, and then we went through 9-11 and then the, the Bush uh, administration. And so we were kind of like a... Because we were still very liberal Democrat, while the Republicans under Bush were having a different way. And um, so we were kind of like called the parallel universe. Mm -hmm. we, were, we were almost like, if only, kind of, you know. I, I said, okay, fine. We're not going to do any harm, mm -hmm. you know. If anything, I think we heightened the sense of public service. And not just for the, the, the uh, president uh, or the presidency, the office itself, or the staff, or the Joint Chiefs, or any of the people that serve the, the uh, executive branch. But also, that the, I mean, it's upwards of like two and a half to three million people on any given day that, that serve the government and all the yes. different agencies yes. all over the country, all over the world, mm -hmm. diplomatic corps, mm -hmm. the military, uh, the Peace Corps. Yes. Uh, uh, all, all, you know, how th th this is really who the government is. They're the only people that people see on a daily basis. You go into the passport office or you go into yes. unemployment. You go, that's when you, you have a personal relationship with the guy. Again, if it's not personal, it's impersonal. Mm. And, uh, and I think that our show kind of gave that sense. And another part which I found interesting is so often the stories that we dealt with were true stories that we covered. You know, it's like uh, the one. One of my favorite was the president of the, the the office of the president got a letter that was sent during the depression in the 1930s to President Roosevelt of a young uh, uh, a black uh, 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 child in Brooklyn asking the president to please help his father find a job. Mm. And uh, it got lost in, 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 in what we call the dead letter box in those days, mm -hmm. and, and finally got found and sent to the White House. <laughs> it wasn't uh, Roosevelt, it was Bartlett. And uh, Charlie, you know, and DeLay Hill, who played Charlie, um, read it and brought it to the president's, president's attention, and Bartlett said, see if you can find this guy and bring him in. Mm -hmm. And so we did. That was a true story. And Whoa. I think it was Carter. I think it happened with Carter. That oh, it was wow. a letter sent to Roosevelt 
that finally arrived during the Carter administration, who knows, 30, 35 years later, and President Carter said, to, let's see who this person is, <laughs> and they checked it out. If it wasn't him personally, it was his staff. I believe it was President Carter. There was, a, there was another very interesting story when, uh, because we had, we had uh, advisors uh, who had worked in, in administrations going all the way back to Eisenhower. Mm -hmm. So they were both Republican and Democrat over the years, and these stories came flooding out that, that the, this, this, the writers, the staff writers, would couch in modern day stories. Yes. One of them was uh, Yeltsin came to the White House before he was uh, Russian president, before the Federation, and uh, he had no credentials, and he was, he was a terrible uh, alcoholic, <laughs> as was known. And he wanted to see Bush Sr. And they couldn't see him because he didn't have any credentials and he was at the White House. He locked himself in the limousine in, in one of the corridors and he was rocking the limousine. And they went to the president and Bush said, what are we gonna do with this? He said, we can't get him out of there. And it's an embarrassment and the press is gonna, he said, okay, fine. He said, bring him to this corridor near the, uh, the uh, near the West Wing, uh, near the, uh, the press mm -hmm. uh, briefing room. Mm -hmm. And we'll meet him there with interpreters on both sides and still photographers only, and that's it, mm -hmm. and no sound. Mm -hmm. And that was Yeltsin. And I think six months later, he was the president of, of Russia. So he, had, he was wow. bragging about, and that was a true story. So we did it with an ambassador. Uh, was played by Lawrence Pressman, an old uh, dear friend, a fellow actor from the New York days, who played this guy mm -hmm. that uh, was pulling that same kind of stunt, and I had to fire him. <laughs> and, and it came from the Yeltsin incident with President, uh, first President Bush. So, uh, so many of the stories, as I say, were, uh, had a life of their own in reality yes. that the writers and, and Aaron Sorkin, my God, is just an extraordinary writer. They said if, if Shakespeare were alive today, he'd be writing for television and he'd be Aaron Sorkin. <laughs> I agree, I, I, he's just a magnificent mm -hmm. writer, you know. And again, it's personal. Aaron never drew uh, absolute colors of black and white. He never did. Even the people he disagreed with politically, he never denigrated them. He never mm -hmm. demonized them. They were human beings. And it was very clear in the show that I had opposition on the, uh, across the aisle and that we had, to, we had to make compromises and we had to serve the greater good. It was always the greater good. It was about the country and not about the personality. And that was very satisfying to do in those days, you know, and to be a part of that, to be in the center of it. A couple of years ago, I did a sit down kind of like this, mm -hmm. and he asked me to come to a uh, sit down like this uh, in Washington and with a, an audience and talk about it. And I, I agreed to do it, and and uh, I went over there and we did it at the um, uh, the and, uh, the library, the mm -hmm. Library of Congress. Mm -hmm. And he showed a couple of scenes, you know, uh, like screen behind, big screen. And uh, he showed two scenes that I had never seen. Hmm. I, was, <laughs> I was fascinated by And I realized that I may have, I know I didn't see all of the shows. Mm -hmm. I may have seen at least maybe three quarters. Mm -hmm. But there are still some episodes that I have not seen. Mm -hmm. And uh, he showed two scenes that of, of episodes I'd never seen, and one of them was one of my favorite scenes, just filming it. And it was a, it was a, it was a scene where I'm on the phone to a, a, trying to get a recipe for a turkey for Thanksgiving, <laughs> and I have to cover my, <laughs> my, uh, uh, you know, I don't want the person on the other to know that it's the president. <laughs> right, right. So I'm disguising. I'm saying, oh, this is so and so from, uh, uh, I'm from. Uh, Michigan or somewhere, and they're running around trying to find the, uh, the Michigan uh, mailing code so I can give him a name. It was hysterical. He's trying to get this, uh, mm -hmm. this butterball turkey recipe. It was hysterical. And I thought, what a light moment mm. uh, to do. I enjoyed those moments so well. Mm -hmm. I remember one time there was a scene where I'm in a discussion that I'm not winning in the Oval Office, and the description as Bartlett begins to bang his head on the Resolute desk. <laughs> and I told her, I said, no, I'm never gonna do that. He said, well, you've gotta finish reading the scene. I finished reading the scene and I did, I banged my <laughs> <laughs> I always knew that as long as I did what was called uh, to do in the script, I was fine. Mm -hmm. When I deviate and when I thought, 
no, 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 I, I know how to do this. Mm -hmm. I, this is, and, and, and they'd call me out, and Aaron was very, very specific. He mm -hmm. said, well, that's fine, that's Martin. Mm -hmm. That's not Bartlett. So mm -hmm. I learned that if I surrendered to him, mm -hmm. I was ruled by him, I was Bartlett. When I was ruled by me, I was Martin, and it wasn't nearly as good, you know. Wow. But he was a really good sport because he, he tolerated a lot, a lot of Martinisms <laughs> during the uh, seven seasons. But uh, well, it was one of the great times of my life and one of the most satisfying things I've ever done. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very, very proud of that, yeah. that series. And uh, young people today are seeing it, I guess, on uh, Netflix, and, mm -hmm. you know, they, I, I should start watching it because maybe I could catch up on... Thanks for watching that video. To see the full episode, check out the box over here or the link in the description.